geometric sequence is one that's a bit complicated. It is important that you should understand that it is bigger than the other two sequences. It is the geometric sequence equivalent of sum into infinity. Also, it is the geometric sequence that converges. So whenever you see the word converge, you must think of your common ratio that is between minus one and one. Converge. Right, let's look at what we have here. Once we are told that it is a geometric sequence, you should know the general term there. Tn is equal to ar to the power n minus one. The general term will be equal to ar to the power n minus one. This is the general term of the geometric sequence. What else we know about the geometric sequence? See as good here converge, and it is where we can find the sum to infinity. Sum to infinity, it's a over one minus r. That's what, this is the formula we use to calculate the sum to infinity. Another important part got, got geometric sequence is the sum. Sn will be equals to a into r to the power n minus one over r minus one, depending which one is bigger. Right, let's come back here to the question. We are given a geometric sequence. Once we are told that it's a geometric sequence, we must know that it has what? A common ratio, where T2 over T1 is the same as T3 over T2. Given the geometric sequence, the first term is 8x eight, eight squared plus 4x cubed plus 2x to the power 4. Find the nth term. What is the nth term? Remember I told you that the nth term is the general term. In other words, it's Tn. So whenever you see the word nth term, it is Tn. Do I know the nth term for the geometric sequence? Yes, we know it. It's in the formula corner. It's Tn is equals to Ar to the power n minus one. So that's what we're looking for, the general term, the nth term. Can you check what we have there? Do we have the number of terms? No, we don't know how many terms we're adding there. Do we have the first term? Yes, we do have the first term as what? As 8x squared. This is the first term. Do we have the common ratio? Yes, we can check the common ratio. Because we are told that this is the geometric, I don't have to check all of them. If you do one, you'll be okay. So r is equals to t2 over t1, because it's the ratio, common ratio. What is t2 then? It is 4x cubed over the first term, which is 8x squared. That's how I find my common ratio. You can then go and simplify that quickly for us. This then will be, 4 goes once there, twice here. So we've got 1 over 2, x cubed over x squared. You can take this 2, I'll separate the lower 3, solo x to the power 1, so which will be half x. That is the, the, the common ratio that we'll be using here. This is our common ratio and this is our first term. Remember, this is only one mark, so it's something that is very easy. Let us find the general term. Our general term, or our nth term in this particular case, Tn will be, what is our first term? This is our first term. It is 8x squared times, what is our r? Our r in this case is x over two, or half of x, so this is times x over two, a r to the power n minus one. A r to the power n minus one, n minus one. A r to the power n minus one. So this is the general term. This is exactly what we wanted to get. It is A r to the power n minus one. That is the general term. The next question is, remember this is the formula. Because we did not have n, and it was only one mark. Let's move on to the next question. For what values of x will the series converge? Ah, there's a key word there. For what values of value or values? When you write it in this way, we don't want to tell you whether it is one value or many values. So for what value or values of x will the series converge? This become my key word. I know that whenever the sequence is converging, the common ratio is between minus one and one. What is it that we're looking for here? We're looking for the value of values of x. That's what we're looking for. But since the series is converging, we know that there the common ratio must be between minus one and what? And one. We're looking for x. What is our common ratio in this particular sequence? Ah, this is our common ratio. 
it is x over 2. So this is our common ratio. So when there is r, I push in the common ratio that we've already found from the first problem. So our common ratio in this case, it is x over 2, or half x. So instead of r, I can put x over 2. It is greater than minus 1 and less than 1. It is between minus 1 and 1. That is our common ratio. Remember what is fun and la? Sifuni veluga x. Sifuni veluga x, sifunu x. Right. How do we get rid of x here? You cross multiply. But this is for this side and it's also for that other side. So to find x here, you multiply it by 2 on both sides. So our x will be greater than, take this, you multiply it by that, it will be minus 2. Take this also and multiply it by that, it will be less than 2. These are the values of x. x can be any value that is greater than minus 2, but less than 2. That is how you calculate your value of x. Let's look at the third uh, question there. It calculates the sum of the series to infinity, sum to infinity. You go straight to your formula, sum to infinity. In this case, we're not given the value of x. We're not only predicting it with impact of minus 2, not 2. We're given the actual value of x. So that's what we'll be using. Remember, we're looking for the sum to infinity now. Let me just quickly clean this one. Right. The sum to infinity, you check, go to your formula sheet, you take it. Sum to infinity is equals to a over r, a over 1 minus r. This is the formula to find the sum to infinity. Remember, it is there in your formula sheet. Sum to infinity is the first term divided by 1 minus r. Okay. Do we have what we need? Sum to infinity is equals to, do we know the first term? Let's look at what we have. Ah, this is the first term. What is our first term? If I, let me just clean this one quickly. What is our first term? Our first term is 8 x squared. But now we are given the value of x. We are given the value of x. So we can find the actual value of the first term. Now how do we do that? Where there is x, we push in 3 over 2. So what is this saying? We do have 8 into, what is x? It is 3 over 2. But this is what? This is squared. So this will be 8 into 3 squared would be 9. And 2 squared would be 4. Right. This is what we have. What is, how many times does 4 goes into 8? 2 times, 2 times 9 is 18. So this is the value of the first term. So wherever we see the first a, we're going to push in 18. So in this particular case, we'll have, instead of a, we've got 18 over 1 minus r. Now we've got to find our common ratio. What is our common ratio? Our common ratio is half of x. Remember that we got our common ratio as r is equals to half of x, half of x. But in this particular case, we are given the value of x. This is what our common ratio was. But this question 2.3 has given us the value of x as 3 over 2, as 3 over 2. Wherever we've got x, we've got to go and push in 3 over 2 so that we can get to the actual common ratio there. Our common ratio will then be half times x. What is our x in this particular case? Yes, we are given as 3 over 2. So we write 3 over 2 as our x. Then we break those brackets. Then the common ratio is 1 times 3. It is 3 over 2 times 2. It is 4. Ah, this is the value of, of our common ratio. Hence, we've got 18 over 1 minus the common ratio. In this case, it is 3 over 4. Then the sum to infinity would be equals to, you take your calculator, you punch that, it will give us the solution. Remember that this is a fraction, hence I put my, I punch my fraction button. On top, I've got 18. I go on, on the bottom, I've got 1 minus. I put it as it is. I see a fraction there again, which is a 3. I go down over 4. Yes, it, it is over 4. What is then my common ratio? I press the equal sign. The calculator will do the rest for you. In this particular case, I'm getting a number 72. This is then the sum to infinity. Thank you.